Well, let's pivot now, discuss the latest in the grain markets. Joining us earlier this week to share his thoughts was Jeff Peterson. He is the president of Heartland Farm Partners. We'll begin discussing the position of the funds. Let's dive into the markets and in particular I want to begin this week's conversation talking about the funds. You know, the fund positions is something that a lot of people will know, but I'm curious, where do the funds sit today when it comes to corn and soybean markets and what might that tell us about the prices? Yeah, no, the fund position is very important to monitor. That comes out every Friday afternoon and that tells us basically where the fund position is of as of that previous Tuesday. And we look back to the, our, our latest results, we've got the funds there. They're long on the soybean side, uh, they're short on the corn side and actually short on the wheat side also. And as we dig deeper into that, what that's really telling us is that we've ultimately, they think the beans are continue to work their way higher. They are short on the corn side, which that's been getting a little bit of pressure on that corn market. And they've been continuing to stay short on that wheat side. And what we need to see in order to, to basically turn the corn and the wheat side here, we just got to get some additional positive items in here that'll kind of bump the demand side and kind of get them start buying back. If they start buying back, that can be really good on corn and wheat because they've got a lot of shorts they can buy back against price. Well, let's talk about some of the factors that are influencing the commodity trade today. What are the most important things you're keeping an eye on day to day? Yeah, right now it's that transition period. You know, we're coming off of looking at the U.S. supply, but then what we're flipping right back over and looking at South American supply and what's going on in South America weather. In addition, the, the Israel-Hamas war, and in particular, what impact that's going to have on crude oil prices if other countries get involved or if there's any type of activity as we look around that Strait of Hormuz. Um, in addition, what we're watching is that what's going on with the war between Russia and Ukraine? And what impact is that gonna have on two things with Ukraine, their ability as we think about their spring planning, what's a mix of crops gonna be, but also on the grain that they have in supply. How are they gonna be able to go ahead and get that shipped out? And are they gonna be able to move that out of the Black Sea or are they gonna have to rely on the rail lines going further west? And then um, at the same time in there, we have to keep a very close eye on what's our demand looking like here in the U.S. and not only the sales side, but also the shipment side, Bryce. I'll ask you about demand coming up here in a second, but let's go back. You bring up South American weather. Let's go back to the very basics of, of what's happening down there. Because I think if you hear the chatter, it's, you know, we're paying attention down there, but where are they at in relation to their growing season? Yeah, no, that's a great point. And if you go into this time of year, so let's just take Mato Grosso, which is a major, you know, soybean and corn producing area. But you know, currently right now within that state, they're about 91% planted. But overall though, if we look at Brazil overall, about 61.2% planted um, over on the soybean side, but they are about 76% planted on the corn side. Now, as we dig a little deeper in that, weather's causing them some challenges, of course. What you've got is the conditions are too dry in the central and northern parts, but too wet in the kind of the southeast. So there's, it's hard to find a perfect spot in there. And the big thing that everybody's watching is we're having a lot warmer temperatures than normal. And some would also say that when we take the warmth and also the precip together, this could be one of the driest starts they've had going back 40 years. How concerned are you about that situation? Yeah, I'm just, we're monitoring at this point because our biggest concern, there's really two sides to it. One, it can have an impact on what the yields could be on the soybean side, but the bigger impact longer term could ultimately end up being what's that gonna mean for that safrina corn crop, that corn crop that will get planted after these beans that they're kinda waiting to plant or getting planted in here get harvested. So I think it's bringing a little bit of premium into the market yet, but what we know is that when that premium gets brought in, if the weather changes down there and when it does, we'll quickly go ahead and take some of that premium back out of the market's price. Okay, on the demand front here in the United States, we began the week with some export sales. Always good to see that, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is. And there's been a lot of question marks on that. So let's dig a little bit deeper into that. You know, currently on the corn shipment side, corn shipments have actually been rather positive. They're up about 23.1% compared to a year ago at this time. Now USDA believes we're gonna be up about 24.9%. And the positive note there on the sales side, it's up about 31%, and, and that's the bright notes. As we come over to the soybean side, soybeans overall, as we look at the, the shipments, are not so bad, down about 5.6%. Now USDA thinks we're gonna be down about 11.9% overall. But the rest of the story, so to speak, comes in on the sales side because currently sales on, on soybeans right now are down about 26%. 
mostly China. Is that where we're lagging behind the soybean front? Yeah, it really is. I mean, that'd be the area that we'd be lagging behind. Now, we do think as we go forward, though, we're, we're seeing some additional sales picking up. And, and if we dig into that a little bit deeper, really what we see is going on there is the fact that uh, South America, in particular Brazil, had a very big soybean crop, and that held on right into our harvest this year. The other part that hurt us is the fact that the Mississippi River was low, and that caused us to put less grain in the bar, just higher freight rates. So we're offering out bushels uh, for sale at a higher price than what we'd normally see for this time of year in, in regard to the basis side. So we weren't able to compete as well with South America, and they were able to get a few more sales on than what they normally would. You bring up the term basis, based on everything going on right now as you lay this, this picture out for the, for the row crops in particular, how important is basis going to be domestically to see some grain being moved around? And I think that's the big thing. So let's just kind of break it down by commodity and think about delivery right now and then also think about what it can be as we move out of into the first part of the year. But big challenge we have right now, honestly, Bryce, is that the farmers, he's busy in the field. He really isn't thinking about uh, moving anything out of the bins and especially on the corn side the challenging part is is that we've got prices when we look at where the futures is at and we put the basis back against that or at or below break even levels. So in order to get any bushels to move a couple things have to happen. We either got to have a really good bump in the basis or we got to see that futures price come up and I think we're going to see uh, the basis or get an improve in here. Now the thing I would say though is that if you've got some bushels to maybe core some bends here yet before the end of the year, I'd say go ahead and work on getting some of those basis levels set. Over on the soybean side, there's some good enough demand out there. Crush demand is very good. I think we can physically have some stronger basis levels for the November delivery and also post-harvest after that, Bryce.